All right, people, <laughs> neural nets. So we got this Kaggle competition going on for CSEP 546 graduate level machine learning course. And I just wanted to show a little progression of how you might want to take your neural network from a simple fully connected network into a convolutional neural network, and then how you might wanna add residual blocks to that. This won't get you a winning score in the assignment, but it'll head you on the right track to start. So here we have our first fully connected network. And I went through a video a few days ago about how to do an end-to-end -end training run with a network like this, show you how to stitch data together and all that stuff. We're not gonna cover that now, we're just gonna cover the network structure. So if I go a little quick and some of these concepts don't make sense, go back and watch that video. But this network has a single layer average pooling to scale down. Then it has a fully connected layer that goes from the every input in the 12 by 12 scale down to the number of hidden nodes. Then it applies a sigmoid. Then from there, it just goes straight into the output layer where you have the output of the previous layer going into one, going through a sigmoid, and that's the output of the network. So there you go. There's a very simple fully connected layer. Now let's look at what it will be to take this and do a very simple addition that turns it into a convolutional network. Okay, here we have the convolutional network. The first layer is a sequential called convolution and it stacks three layers, a convolution 2D, a ReLU, and a max pooling, which um, scales the image down. The convolution 2D goes from the number of layers because the input is a grayscale, it only has one layer to the number of convolutional filters you want. In this case, that's a parameter and it says five. So this will go from the single layer into five layers where it will learn convolutional filters that are kernel size three by three wide. And then I do one padding so that when these filters process the input, they have an output that's the same size as the input. Then of course you do a ReLU instead of a sigmoid here. Well, not of course, but that's what I choose to do. And then max pool to do the same scaling down that the previous one just did with an average pooling layer. Then I run a batch norm layer here. Then I run a dropout layer. And then the fully connected layer from the previous network and the output layer from the previous network. So this network just adds a few things upstream of the previous network that should make it work a lot better for an image task. Now let's talk about the forward pass on this network. And here's a little trick I do with this verbose thing when constructing slightly complicated networks. Sometimes you lose track of how big the data is at some point deep within your network and then you run it and it's like, oh, input size is wrong. So I like to have this flag I can easily turn on so I can watch the different layers of the network transform the input and make it smaller and reshape it and stuff like that. So I, I, it's just much easier to debug with something like this. Anyway, so there's a little bit of, of that debugging. Then you apply the convolutional layer, apply the batch norm layer, reshape, apply the dropout layer, apply the fully connected layer, and apply the output layer. Just a few little tricks there, and this certainly improves the accuracy. In a little test I did, which isn't super scientific or super well done. This is about a two and a half percent accuracy improvement over the previous network. Okay, now let's talk about a residual network. And what I've done here is I've created a helper class, which is a neural network in its own right, but I call it a residual block. And a residual block can be put into your convolutional network multiple times if you want to add multiple residual layers. What this does is it takes the number of input channels, the number of output channels, which is exactly the same as Conv2D does, kernel size padding and stride. And then it applies a convolutional layer followed by batch norm ReLU, then a second convolutional layer followed by another ReLU and outputs the result of that. Okay, now to the forward pass. And here's where you see the trick that turns this into a residual network. You take the input in and then you save it. I've chose to call it input. Then you pass the original input through all the layers of the network that we defined above. Um, and then at the end, you add the input back in to the output of those. And so what that does is it forces these to fit the residual and not try to fit the original input. And that's where a lot of the power comes from and the ability to stack these things without having convergence problems. Um, then you apply the ReLU number two and return the output. So that's the residual block. Now I'm going to show how you put that into your network and connect it with the other stuff that we've shown in the previous two network structures. Okay, so this residual network has a convolution which is exactly the same as in the previous convolutional example. It has a batch norm, 
Then it has a residual layer, which is an instance of that residual block we just defined. Um, this one has a kernel of three and padding and the stride of one. And so essentially this will take the input and keep it the exact same size. At this point, we'll be at 12 by 12 for the input and the output will also be 12 by 12. Then you do the dropout and then you do the exact same stuff from all the other networks for this fully connected layer leading to the output layer. Then to do the forward pass, I mean, it's starting to get a little long with my, particularly with this verbose debugging information here, but you apply convolution one, batch norm, then you apply the residual block, then you do your reshaping, drop out, fully connected, output layer, out. Okay, and again, on my little unscientific test, this particular network did about 1% better than the convolutional network I showed, which did about 2.5% better than the fully connected network I showed. That's just to give you a sense of, you know, with no tuning, just changing this network structure, how you're heading in the right direction. So if you're in the class and you're doing the Kaggle competition, you might want to start with something in the ballpark of what I've shown you here, and then do tuning, add layers, try to figure out the best way to add the tricks we talked about in the class to achieve the highest accuracy you can. Good luck to you all. Peace.